Hello, this is Kelly Ganeyan, and I am going to channel today on a marriage issue, such as um, gender roles. I have a unique marriage where my husband is Arab. And I suspect that he thinks the woman belongs in the house with the kids. And perhaps if I was the bold type to really go get my career started. You know, it started off where I was the insecure one who didn't think I could actually have a career and balance it with a family. I just didn't have that confidence in the beginning. So now we have five kids and it's really hard while they're young for me to actually consider finding work. Um, But you see, I would love to channel and I'd love to do more of it. So that's a separate issue. But meanwhile, even managing the house, I feel like my husband thinks that I should be able to handle it all and I just can't. I mean, maybe I can. I don't know. Things are getting a little better. Our youngest is getting older and, and I, uh, can't really, it's just little things that he doesn't do. Like he doesn't take the groceries out of the grocery bags that he buys. He just takes the groceries in and sets them on the counter and walks away. And I know that he grew up in an Arab country with five sisters. He's the only boy. And I know that so much of this is just so normal for him that he doesn't even think twice about it. So I'm just, I just want my spirit guides to like, um, help me find peace with this. Like help me see this, see the truth in this. You know, I'm a student of A Course in Miracles and it says to ask your Holy Spirit to show you what the truth is here. And so that's what I'm going to do. And here is, um, the language that comes to me when I talk to my Holy Spirit. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> Hello, Kelly. Thank you for seeking a loving truth, a loving perspective on this subject of relationship in marriage. It is such a big topic, but we want you to consider that Every marriage is unique because every individual is unique. And when two unique individuals come together, the agreements that they make together are, are, are dependent on their own unique personal experiences. And there is no way that you can step into your husband's mind and understand where he's coming from, nor is that necessary. Your responsibility in a marriage is simply to communicate with him your preferences and accept what he's willing to offer. And what he isn't willing to offer, then you then decide what you're willing to do about that. And it's not necessary for you to force a a situation to be agreed upon. You don't need to continue to verbally compromise with him to the point of both of you accepting what's going on. By his actions, you know what he is and isn't willing to do. So really, your choice then is to recognize that you're co-creating this relationship with him. And 
the most powerful action that you can take at that point is to release any negative emotion that you have attached to the responsibilities of the household that he is unwilling to take over. Because when you can release those negative emotions, then you are choosing to be in a high frequency in your state, regardless of whether or not it's what you want. And that is super powerful. In fact, it's almost a gift because to be able to forgive something that happens in your home is such an intimate experience that it actually teaches you how to then um, step out into the world and forgive. What the habits that you have in your home you carry with you into the world. And in your home, they are deep inside you, just like the relationships that you have um, in your home or on your, in your day-to-day relationships, whether you work, you know, whatever you spend your days doing, whoever you're around, those are your special, quote-unquote, relationships. And... Those are the ones that you gain the most from forgiving because they're charged. When you learn how to forgive your charged relationships, the rest of them are easier to forgive. Some of them are going to be intense, but for the most part, if you practice forgiveness with the relationships that you have, a stronger... um, presence with, when you spend more time or you share huge responsibilities with these relationships, then you gain the most from forgiving those relationships. So we recommend that you practice forgiving your husband when he doesn't live up to your preferences in a husband. Whatever it is, whether it's help around the house, help with the kids, um, choice of career, um, choice, you know, personality when the two of you are out on your own, whatever it is, if you can learn how to be okay with what is at those times and we know this sounds super simple But obviously, it takes practice. And obviously, it's not as simple an action. But we think that you can come up with things about him that are pleasant enough to distract you from the things that are unpleasant. And you might even be surprised about um, the miracles that happen upon forgiving him. So, for example... Say he comes home from the grocery store and he sets the groceries on the counter and he just leaves them there. He takes out a couple things because he's offered to make a simple dinner, but he leaves the rest of the groceries in the bags. And this is exactly what happened a couple days ago. So say instead of letting your mind go into a negative place of like, Hey, Moez, could you please empty the rest of the bags? Maybe, um, sarcastically, right? Instead, you just say, um, like totally, this is what you're thinking while you go and empty the bags. Do you think, oh, I'm so grateful that he's making dinner that frees up 20 to 40 minutes of my evening. So instead of making dinner, I'm going to go for a run and you don't even think about the bags anymore. Okay. You don't make a big story about gender roles and him being from a you know, male dominated culture and (laughs) just don't even go there because your thoughts and your patterns are contributing to the mass consciousness of your society, of your culture, of your, your spirit families. Okay. And as you consciously choose to think pleasant thoughts, thoughts that are um, 
grounded in gratitude or joy or peace, you know, then you are tugging on the rest of the consciousness that is att- that attached to yours. And you aren't aware of this. You aren't aware of who exactly it is, where they are, what their story is, but you're sharing your consciousness with a group, a spirit family, and you're co- continuously cycling the whole of all your stories. So all of your stories are tied together and they're blending and they're merging like a big soup. And as you cycle through those, you're picking up on theirs and they're picking up on yours. And when you stay positive, it's like you're filtering them. You're purifying them. You're contributing love and negating the negative. So it's much bigger than your individual relationships. There's a lot more going on in the spirit realm that you're not aware of. And you don't need to understand. You actually make more change for gender roles by staying positive because you're going to then invite all of those other individuals within your soul family to be more positive and naturally it will occur to people in their individual lives to be more forgiving to be more trusting to encourage power in relationships men will forgive themselves and then they will allow themselves to relax at work which will allow them to enjoy their children, which will allow them to spend more time with their children, which will allow them to realize that chores can be pleasant. You see, it's not something that happens with force or logic or fairness or compromise or negotiation. It's something that happens as an allowing like a flower blooming, you don't need to go and analyze the blooming and say, what does this petal need to do next to open? (laughs) What, you know, it's the same thing. Relationships and human consciousness and healing happens naturally as you pull away the anxiety, as you release the fears and the the guilt and the expectations and the judgments if you just take your ego out of it and be a mother to the people look for the mother inside you for every relationship that you have with embody the feeling of an unconditionally loving mother who's kind and firm. Yes, have a conversation with Moez about your expectations, but leave it there. Let him be himself and accept and love him how he is and move on with your life because that is how you serve your relationship and at the same time you're serving humanity in ways that you cannot even understand at this point. That's how it is. So let's wind down and say namaste.